At the foundational level, you see it even at the laws of just weak and strong nuclear forces at the, at the center of the atom. You see that these have to be so finely tuned to within a razor's edge that the smallest variation in the universal constants would create a universe in which no life could emerge. As a matter of fact, physicists don't even think the universe could emerge. If the smallest changes in the strong force and the weak force in electromagnetism and forces of gravity, even at the level of just the elements themselves, the smallest variation, you would not have a universe like ours that supports life. That's just at the foundational level. At the regional level of our galaxy, galaxies have to be shaped just a certain way in order for life to emerge. You have to be a certain size, a certain mass, a certain shape, a certain location in the universe in order for life to emerge. And we happen to have one of those. We're in it. As a matter of fact, at that same regional level, the star system you happen to be in has to be arranged a certain way with a certain shape, a certain number of planets, a certain location within the spiral arm. Too close, too far out doesn't work. These are fine-tuned constants that have to be present at the regional level. And then when we get to our planet, oh my gosh, there are certain criteria for the planet that have to be in place. You know, the idea of a planet that supports life is crazy, given what's required. What's required in terms of simple things like the position next to the sun, the tilt of the actual planet relationship to the sun, the, the, the kind of atmosphere, the kind of terrestrial crust, the kinds of components in that terrestrial crust, even the size of our moon. These things are absolutely necessary in order for life to exist on planet Earth. So at the foundational level, the regional level, the locational level, everything has to be just so like in Goldilocks, right? Not too hot, not too cold but just right. And the margin of error is crazy. Crazy fine-tuned. So it turns out that these kinds of layers of evidence you see in our murder scene are very similar to what we see for life to emerge on the planet. You have foundational layer of fine-tuning of the constants. You have a regional layer of the galaxy and the solar system, and then a very fine-tuned elements related to the planet itself. So these elements, imagine, for example, if I told you we were going to take a ship ride, uh, get in a, a cockpit of an of a, a airplane or a rocket ship, and we're going to go to a very specific place. If you had all of these gauges, hundreds and hundreds of gauges, it turns out you would have to fine tune each gauge to within a hair trigger precision measurement. And each one is dependent on the others. All of these have to be perfectly tuned. These are all the universal constants of both our universe, the galaxy, the solar system, and the planet that have to be just so. And if there's a small variation on any one of these, life does not emerge in planet, on planet Earth, anywhere in the, in the universe. This kind of thing is really hard to understand how it could be so... I'm going to tell you something. I did this little illustration for you. I didn't even do half of the fine-tuning that's required I didn't have space on this, on this cockpit to do what really is required. The number of universal constants is staggering. And they are all geared toward a certain destination in mind. The destination is a planet that supports the kind of life that you and I experience. Very unique. In fact, I'm trying to quote mostly atheists here. The unique nature of the fine-tuning is disturbing for those who don't believe in a fine-tuner. Even, you'll see people say things like this, it's shocking to find how many of the familiar constants of the universe lie within a very narrow band that makes life possible. If a single one of these accidents were altered, stars would never form, the universe would fly apart, DNA would not exist, life as we know it would be impossible, Earth would flip over or freeze, and so on. A little bit dramatic, but you get the point. This stuff is incredibly fine-tuned. How do we explain it? There's only a couple of ways to explain it by staying inside the room. One way is simply to say, hey, maybe it's just chance. Really? Okay. Can you imagine if I walked into that scene at the house and I said, wow, you know, I see some things, but it's probably just chance. No investigation. Let it go. I think you'd say I was derelict of duty. You'd say you need to investigate. That doesn't look like chance to me. This ignores the incredible fine-tuning of the universe altogether. Or you might say, well, maybe it's some kind of physical necessity. Maybe the laws have to be set that way because any variation would be physically impossible. Not true. Physicists themselves will say, no, the fine-tuning of the universe does not have to be this way. As a matter of fact, if you believe in multiverse theory, you believe there are a number of universes that are tuned differently with a different set of physical laws. 
So it doesn't have to be. It's not a matter of physical necessity. But maybe we go back to the multiverse. Couldn't the multiverse explain this? If you have an infinite number of universes all slightly different, shouldn't one look like ours? I think so. I think in some ways people rush to multiverse theory because of the fine-tuning they see. By the way, there's no physical evidence pointing to a multiverse. But the fact we can't explain the fine-tuning might incline us to believe in a multiverse. But here's the problem. If we stay in the room by using either chance or physical law, these don't work. And they don't work. I've done entire chapters on this. I won't drag you through this right now. But they're unsupported by the evidence. And even if I could say there was some constant between the physical laws and the level of the, of the, uh, of the, of the atom, that would not explain the unusual galaxy, solar system, and planet we happen to live on. So we go to the third quick thing. Okay, well, maybe it's a multiverse. Once again, if it's a multiverse generator, guess what? You've already conceded an external source. You already agree with me. The best explanation is outside the room, not inside the room. But this has problems because it lacks all space, time, and matter. Remember, we already talked about that. But not only that, if this thing can create the kinds of universes in which we emerge, wouldn't you have to argue that this thing also has to be fine-tuned to some degree? This multiverse generator, Matt Richard Swinburne says it this way. He says, look, any proposed multiverse mechanism, like that pot of boiling water, needs to have a certain form rather than innumerable possible other forms, and probably constants too that need fine-tuning in the narrow sense. So the, all you've done is kick the problem of fine-tuning down the road, but you still have to account for fine-tuning. 